Okay everyone, today I'm going to be using my giant neodymium magnet to see if it can actually attract the iron in our blood. Now if you thought blood wasn't attracted to a magnet, you're wrong. Let me show you how blood can be attracted to a magnet. So first I'll try it on my own veins in my body and see if I can feel anything when I put the magnet next to me. And then I'll be seeing if it's attracted to some beef's blood. So I got this from a slaughterhouse. I'm gonna put it on a frictionless surface and see if it's actually attracted to the magnet or not. And then we'll be seeing if there's any difference when I actually burn this blood and make it ashes and see if it's attracted to the magnet or not. Okay, first let's try it on my veins in my body and see if I can feel anything. Here we go. Okay, so maybe we're just not able to detect it. So let's get a frictionless surface like this here. So basically I just have a test tube and some styrofoam floating on water. And that's to create my frictionless surface. Let's see what happens when we bring our magnet near it. Well, it's actually moving it away from it. It's definitely not attracted to the magnet. Okay, so why wasn't the magnet able to attract the iron in the blood? Well, there's a few reasons for this. One of them is that even though there is relatively a lot of iron in blood, there's not a lot of iron compared to the rest of the stuff in blood. For example, in my entire body, I have around only four grams of iron. That's only about 0.005% of the weight of my body. So it's a very low amount compared to the rest of the stuff in my body. And what's the rest of the stuff in the body made of? Mostly water. So let's see what happens to water when we put it next to this magnet. Okay, so I have my water here. Get my magnet. And it's about the exact same result. It moves away from the magnet. That's because water with about everything else in the world is diamagnetic, meaning it very weakly repels a magnet. But why doesn't the magnet even pull the tiny little specks of hemoglobin out of the blood, even though it may be pushing the bulk liquid away, it should still be able to pull the tiny little amounts of iron out, kind of like you can do with Cheerios. If you mush Cheerios up, and put a strong magnet next to them, you can pull the iron, the added iron out of the Cheerios and get some tiny little iron filings. Okay, I don't see anything coming up at all out of the water. Okay, so still no iron coming out of the blood. So because the iron in our blood has a different amount of electrons on it, it's an ion of iron, that means that it's no longer ferromagnetic, which means it's not attracted to a magnet anymore. But some iron oxides are actually slightly attracted to a magnet. They're not ferromagnetic, but they're paramagnetic, which means they're slightly attracted to a magnet. So let's burn the blood and see if we can actually get it to be attracted to our giant magnet here. Okay, let's burn this. Okay, this should be pretty burned now, completely oxidized. Okay, so we have our burned blood here. Okay, now I'm gonna sprinkle this in the water and now see if it's attracted to the magnet. Okay, here we go.
Hey, look. It's attracted to the magnet. I'm not touching the water, but look at it come to it. You can see these pieces here. Let's put a big chunk in there and see. So there's several different oxides that form. There's FeO, Fe203, Fe304. Most rust consists mostly of Fe203. So most likely this is Fe203 or ferric oxide. So ferric oxide is slightly attracted to the poles of a magnet. So it's slightly paramagnetic. Okay, so that was actually pretty cool. We were actually able to get the iron in the blood to be attracted to the magnet but we had to turn it into specific iron oxides first. So iron in the state that it's in in your hemoglobin is actually still paramagnetic, meaning that it is still slightly attracted to a magnet. So why weren't we able to get it attracted to the magnet when we had it floating in the beaker on the surface of the water? Well, that's because like I said, most of it was still water. And so the water pushed it away stronger than the magnet pulled the hemoglobin towards it. And it's not ferromagnetic, so it's not a strong enough magnetic pull to pull all the hemoglobin in a clump towards the magnet. So that's why you can't really feel a magnet when it's near you because that paramagnetic force, the slight attraction to the magnet, is definitely not enough to pull the hemoglobin towards the magnet for you enough to feel the magnet being near your skin. So thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out. And check out theactionlab.com for the Action Lab subscription boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.